last 50 years. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been wonderful and great. And you have received your strength from him many times. But get ready. I said get ready. Because it ain't over. Can I just say this one little thing? Back on that farm in southeast Texas, I ran around in shorts, don't tell the pastor, and a t-shirt and barefooted. And my daddy would say, son, you better change clothes tomorrow because there's a norther coming. The weather is a changing, he'd say. The weather's doing what? The weather is a changing. And you won't be comfortable in those clothes tomorrow. Because in this next season, son, you're going to have to get you some long britches. You're going to have to get you some socks and some boots. You're going to have to get you a little coat to put on. Because the weather's a changing. It's a new season for you, son. A new season will be here tomorrow. And I'm here to declare to you tonight that there's a new season for this church and for our pastor. It's time to take these clothes off and discard them. You're not going to need those clothes in this new season. You're not going to. They're not going to work where you're going. So get your whole new wardrobe, pastors. Church, rise up. Go to Walmart and get you some new clothes for your new season. Because what you're wearing tonight is not going to work where God is taking victory life. Church of Queen Boulevard! Listen, I have been peaceful tonight. Come on, somebody shout. at somebody. Look at somebody to your right. That, that way we'll get everybody. Tell them, say, you might better scoot over because I feel a run coming on me and I need some room. I feel like we've been dipping our toe in the water, but let's jump on in tonight. Let's come on.
glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. I'm not just giving God praise. I'm telling you what's happening in the room. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. Woo! Healings and deliverances and breakthroughs are happening for you tonight. My God. Woo! Everybody just pray in the spirit for a little bit. Yeah, mama, mama, see on the little yes, shanta da bakasha. Shama, mama, mo kile tose telebaki ya baba. So nili nili yes, baba baba. Come on, you're changing clothes tonight. I said you're changing clothes tonight. My God, that thing is in my spirit. You're changing clothes. I believe with all of my heart that what he said was so prophetic. Get you some new clothes. And I just decree and declare tonight, you changing clothes tonight. Another level, another level, another level is coming for your life. And I decree that like he did over this whole church. Can I say it like I feel it? You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 listen. Uh, no, no some, see, some of y'all got to get set free. Be because you looked at him and said, y you, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. No, it, it ain't nothing in O. T-H-I-N-G. No, it's nothing. N-U-T-H-I-N-G. Look at him and say it right. Say, you ain't seen nothing yet. I declare we've all been through a season. The church has been through a season. The nation has been through a season. The churches have been through a season. Some of your families have been through a season. But I'm telling you, we ain't seen nothing yet. Because we're going to get everything back and some more. We're going to get it all back and some more. Woo! Would you thank God for the gift of Bill and Renee Morse? Oh, my God. My God. Uh, oh, be, be seated. Be seated. I, I, I'm, I'm, I got to pour into you now. I, I, I think you're ready now. What? a gift from heaven to this generation. You know, the Bible declares that David hit Tokoshata. Woo! The Bible declares that David served the purposes of God in his generation and then fell asleep. I'm so glad God sent Bill and Renee Morris to our generation. And I decree you ain't seen nothing yet. I told them I, it was amazing because, you know, I was joking with them in the back and I say, y'all raised me, you know. Um, I turned on the television set in 1992 and I saw them at Dominion Camp Meeting at World Harvest Church singing, Whose Report Will You Believe? And I almost took off running at my job <laughs> because that's where I saw them. 
I worked at a place, a video furniture rental store, so I had the television, we had it on, and I was working on a Sunday, and he aired that broadcast. They came on, I was like, who are these people? You know, because it's black people. You know, you're not used to seeing white people out seeing you. <laughs> Come on, where are my black people at? Where, where, where? You know, normally, 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 you know, white people, y'all, y'all have that high pitch opera, you know, that smooth, you know, falsetto voice, but you, you ain't used to seeing no white men groaning and, and you ain't used to seeing somebody white playing the keys like that. So y'all been double dipped by the Lord. <laughs> But I thank God for them, and I, I threaten them, Pastor. I want you to know this, that I'm just trying to calm down to get back to my, my mind where I can talk. And um, I told them there was one song I wanted to sing, and if they didn't sing it, you, you wasn't going to pay them. And, uh, but they did so good tonight, I'm, I'm going to let them off the hook. One more time, can we just thank God for your legacy, for your what you've done in the body of Christ, leading that revival at TBN and just, just all of the things. Oh, thank God for you. And then to the Godfather. It, I, I, he's really not the Godfather for those that are on social media. It's just my, my term of affection for him. <laughs> Last night, we all left so full. I don't know what we all did collectively, but, you, but your value is much more than that. But just take it as us doing the best we could to show you in some kind of way how much we honor your life. One more time. Let's let them know how much we love them, man. We, you and your wife are the top. Love you. Love you so much. And, uh, you know, one of my, you know, one of my, you know, I glean from this man of God. I, you know, he's one of my mentors. I'm privileged to come to his church. And, and I'm telling you, this is a preaching machine. And I know he has blessed you all week long. But Pastor David, my wife, and I love you and Pastor Vicki. Thank God for all your ministry, all you do. I tell you, y'all are faith people. Like I said, y'all don't just preach the message. You are the message. Y'all have lived it, and thank you for your example, sir. Thank you. We love you. Let's let Pastor David know how much we appreciate him and all his ministry. Thank you, sir. We got to honor the men and women of God. These people are precious to my life, so I, I, y'all just have to dawn on me. I, have, I mean, just deal with me. I have to take time to honor them when I'm in their presence, and I just thank God for them. Thank God for them. And of course, to the whole Privet family, you know, uh, Phil Jr., Gill, their wives, their kids, to everybody, this music team. Man, y'all are just moving in all of the helps ministries and everybody. Listen, we're going to take up the offering at the end because I, I got to get this in. And um, the, the ushers have been trained that should you leave before you get to give, they're going to trip you at the door. And we're going to get the money out your one way or the other. It's either it's going to come out your purse when you're falling or something. We're going we to get it. But no, we're going to let, let uh, he, 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 ooh. he prophesied it. He prophesied it, and, we, and we're going to go in here. Now, now to, I, I, uh, let me just say this. We're on a three-part sermon series tonight. I'm going to start it tonight. I'm going to move further into it in the morning, and then hopefully I will get through with it tomorrow night. So we're just going to get part one in tonight. But open your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 16. So honored to have Pastor Perfetto and his wife in with us. We're about to be neighbors. The DFW Metroplex in trouble. Man, I'm so honored to have them. And uh, it's good to know that he's a warrior in the spirit and in the natural. You mess, you mess with anybody tonight, you got to deal with him. 
And I just thank God for his gift to the body of Christ. Um, oh, okay. I think I'm ready. Sweetie, am I ready? Do I look ready? Okay, by the way, this is my wife down here. And uh, man, what a gift. <laughs> Lord, I say, Lord, I, 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 I just, I want somebody so quiet, <laughs> somebody so calm. You know, I was, I, was, I was praying, you know, for a wife, and I just wanted to be nice and calm. And the Lord sent me a Puerto Rican, man. <laughs> and, and I told him, did I miss it somewhere in the... Isn't it? No, she is the sweetest thing in the world. What a gift of God to me. But she is wild. She gets up blowing kisses. Yeah. True story. And then I'm going to get into the word of God. This is, this is how, how she wakes up in the morning. And I had to learn how to wake up in the morning with joy. <laughs> Because, because I wake up in the morning and, you know, I kind of ease into it, you know. And, you know, when you've been single a long time, you know, you get to wake up and set your own pace and all of that. Man, I married her and she wakes up on level 10. <laughs> no, I didn't say five. I said 10. Which means the moment her eyes come open and I am, this is no hyperbole. This is no, I'm not exaggerating at all. The moment her eyes wake up, this is her voice level. Hi, sweetie pie. Good morning, sweetie. How you doing? I don't, and I, <laughs> what you want for breakfast? What you want? What, 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 and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Just give me a moment. Give me. <laughs> and she, and so she, she, everywhere we go to church, you know, every time I introduce her, she just gets up and starts blowing kisses to the whole, the whole and, and, and so we're, with Mike Barber, I do a lot of um, uh, outreach to the inmates. True story. So we're in a men's prison. <laughs> She's sitting over there, and so I get up and I introduce her. You no, know, I want to thank God for my wife. She came with me. She gets up out the seat and start, start, start to almost blow the men. I say, you can't do that in no men's prison. <laughs> So then she was about to blow kisses and she caught herself. So then she did like this and then she just went. Yeah. I say you can't hug them either. <laughs> Gotta teach her how to calm down. <laughs> oh my God. I love her, love her, love her, love her. Matthew chapter number 16. So give me about 45 minutes. I, I, I'm going to walk among you tonight. This might be a little different, but I got to follow the Holy Ghost. Matthew 16, look at verse number 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, Jesus is getting ready to, to leave his earthly ministry. And listen at this. This is, this is wild. All these rumors are floating around. And so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to him, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the anointed one the son of the living God. You need to circle it, polka dot it, underline it, uh, make some notes in your iPad, iPhone. Simon answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, 
Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say unto you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Woo! And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus says, when I build my church, hell will not be able to defeat it. Amen. Amen. Come on, say this after me. Say, I will never be defeated. Yeah, you got to say it. You got to say it. Now, the revelation here is up here in verse number 16. This is my assignment for the next two days. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I'm going to talk to you about the doctrine of sonship. Say that after me, the doctrine of sonship. One more time, say the doctrine of sonship. Now, tonight specifically, I'm going to have you talking a lot. So if you're not comfortable, just kind of scoot over, you know, get whatever you need to do so you can flow. Because I need your mouth open tonight. Because... They say that you only really retain, as far as learning and comprehending and retention, 10% of what you read. That's why you have to always read it again and read it again and read it again, because it's hard to retain what you read. But 20% of what you hear. So it goes up, you know, in your learning skill, goes up 20% if you hear it more than just read it. 30% of what you see. So if I see it, 30% learning retention to it. 50% of what you see and hear. So if you want something really to get in you, get ingrained in you, you got to see it and you got to hear it. 70% of what they say or discuss with others. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to talk to you tonight. <laughs> Why? Because I want you to retain 70% of what goes down in here tonight. 80% of what they experience personally. You don't hardly forget what you experience. I might forget what I heard, what I said, but I never will forget what I went through, what I actually dealt with. And 90% of what they say and do. Now that sounds like the word, doesn't it? Be not a hearer, but a doer. And so tonight, I, I'm going to have you say something repetitively tonight to yourself and to other people because I want this to be retained because I'm trying to build somewhere tomorrow night. I'm trying to get us somewhere. So now, the doctrine of sonship, what is that? What does that mean? It means that there's a change of clothes that have to happen to you tonight. There's, there's something that heaven is trying to move us into. And the church, as usual, or the way we've been doing it, we, we, can't, we can't go with those clothes no more. I mean, everything is raging. The nations are raging. The world is raging. The earth is groaning. Everything is crescendoing. Demonic situations are getting worse and waxing worse and worse. And so right in the midst of all of that, there is also su supposed to be a glory coming out of the people of God. We're not supposed to be getting swept up in this. 
Isaiah 60 say when there's gross darkness in the land, there's supposed to be glory on God's people. And I believe that God wants to show a demonstration of the difference between the children of light and the children of darkness in this season. But we've got to let him do it. And in order to do it, we've got to find some people that have to shift our mentality. We have to literally change our clothes and move into a whole new paradigm. Now, I do not preach this as one that has, you know, already attained this. My wife and I, we pressing toward it every day. We are praying it, speaking it, living it, holding one another accountable, pushing into it, seeking God for revelation, how to get here. Because I believe the earth has been groaning for the manifestation of the sons of the living God. And it's time for us to manifest. I said, it's time for us to manifest. And so I want to take you into some things. And I love what Pastor Charles said today because where we're going, common sense is not needed. So put your hand on your head right now and say, I don't need you tonight. Don't need common sense tonight. We got to go. We got to go. The seasons are changing. Yeah. Woo! Boy, that prophecy going to stick with me. Yeah, you can't go like you're going. The, the clothes you've been walking around in ain't going to work no more. You got to shift into a whole nother set. Whole nother mentality. And that mentality is sonship. Sonship. Jesus did not die for church membership. Amen. He died for kingdom sonship. And tonight you've got to shift from being this little good little church member, this nice little Christian person into a weapon of mass destruction. Amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> and right here in this verse is where we're going to start. Matthew 16, why is Jesus, after being on the earth now 33 years, coming up to the end of his transition in the earth, ask his disciples this question. It is because for 33 years he had been on the earth and for three years or three and a half years he's been walking with them and they still did not know who he was. Isn't that amazing? They were there. They broke the fish and the loaves. They, they saw all the miracles, all the signs, all the wonders. They heard him. They slept with him. They were on a boat with him. They did everything with him and still did not know who he was. And so he's getting ready to transition them. And he says, I need to ask y'all a question. Whom do men say that I am? What's the word out about me? And isn't it amazing that nobody answered that the people are walking around here saying, you're Mary's son. Isn't it amazing that they didn't say, you're Joseph's boy? You know, if I walked up to somebody and said, you know, babe, who are people saying that I am? They're saying, you know, they're saying you're Isaac Petrie. You know, they might put a title to it, pastor or, you know, whatever you call it. But they, 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 they would say, I am who I have said that I am. Because we identify people by their names. God identifies people by their nature. And the Bible declares that, that they knew Jesus, they knew his name, they knew he was from that, but they did not know who he was. And he said, so what are they saying? The rumors were wild. They were saying, you're John the Baptist, you're, you're Elijah. You know, he went up in a whirlwind. Nobody ever saw him. Maybe, maybe you're him back there. The rumors were wild. Why? Because they could not understand him. 
all type of conjecture out about just who he was, this man who's working all these miracles. So they knew enough to know that he ain't, he, he, he ain't, he ain't normal. He ain't, he ain't natural. So this, uh, forget Mary and Joseph. This is some kind of other kind of some, but we just don't know what kind of some other it is. And so they didn't know. They come up with all of these rumors. And then he looks at his disciples and he says, who do you say that I am? And you know, they knew when that question came that it was loaded. So I could just see them starting to drop their head like, oh, we don't know either. <laughs> Why are you asking us? I don't know. They didn't know. The reason Jesus asked them that question is because he knew they didn't know. But it was time for them to know. It was a revelation in whose time had come that the real revelation of his identity was getting ready to be revealed. And God pulled back the curtains of heaven by divine revelation and downloaded it into the minds of Peter. And out of his mouth came, thou art the Christ. You're the anointed one. You're the one that the whole old covenant been talking about. You're the one that's been coming since the book of Genesis. You're the one that's been prophesied by the anointed one that when he came, he would destroy the yoke. You're the one whose government would be upon his shoulders. See, you're, you're, you're the one, the wonderful, the counselor, the, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. You're the one, the one, the one, the son of the living God. Jesus looks at him and says, oh, you didn't get that going to school. You didn't get it going to church. The only way you could have known that is my father would have had to reveal that to you because nobody knew who he was because the father hid him in flesh. He smuggled him into the earth realm through the womb of a woman and he was wrapped in flesh so he looked like a man. But he wasn't just a man. He was the son of the living God as a man. Oh, God. And the whole mystery that he wanted to reveal to them was that what I have been showing you for the last 30 years, and specifically the last 33, is what a son of God looks like as a man. Amen. He is the offspring of God in flesh. And Jesus spoke to me out of this verse and he says, I want you to write this down. In other words, he told me, I want you to write a book. I want you to put this in a book because he says people are preaching about me, but they still don't know who I am. They're singing about me. They're talking about me. They're coming to church, but they still don't know who I am. Why? Because Jesus didn't come to be talked about. He didn't. And I say it all the time. And I'm going to say this until I say it, say it, say it, till people get tired of me saying it so they can do what I say. <laughs> he did not come to be celebrated. He came to be duplicated. And the paradigm shift that we have to make is that Jesus himself was trying to show us something. And what he was trying to model for us was sonship in the earth realm. See, if you don't get this revelation, then you will, you will follow him for the miracles, for the signs, for the wonders. All of those are the things he did, but it was not who he was. He didn't say, whom do men say the things that I'm doing? What are they? No, no, no. He says, who am I? And nobody knew it. Nobody knew it. But then it finally hit Peter. He says, I see it. That's why. That's why we couldn't understand you. That's why when you spoke to the winds and waves, we, we were saying, what? 
manner of man is this? We know you are a man, but what kind of man talks to the winds and the waves that they obey him? What kind of man stands outside of a grave after four days and says, move the stone? Lazarus, come forth. What kind of man speaks one word, go, and thousands of demons scatter? What kind of man does that? the son of the living God. He, he says, we got it. You're not just a man, you're the son of the living God as a man, which means you're, you're, you're human enough to come out of Mary's womb with a body. But then you're divine enough to come from the Father and be released inside of the womb. So you are supernatural. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Oh, God. oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're supernatural. You you you're human, but you are the offspring of God. And God says, that's what I came to show y'all. I came to show y'all a son. <laughs> I came to show you what my children look like in the earth realm. Now, the reason they couldn't get a glimpse of him is because when he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus looked at him and said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. My father had to show you my true identity. Yeah. And he says, but I've got a revelation for you too. You ain't Simon. He says, there's another identity in you too. That when you get this revelation upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Which means the church ain't some religious organization. The church ain't some ritualistic keepers of some laws and commandments. The church are going to be the people who are born out of a revelation that Jesus is the son of the living God. And when Peter said, we got it, that's why we couldn't figure you out. You're the son of the living God as a man. And Jesus said, yeah, you ain't never seen one of these, have you? <laughs> yeah, you ain't never seen one of these on earth. And that's what he came to show us. Now, here he is where we've got to shift paradigm. Because in order to understand this revelation of Jesus, you would have had to understand the beginning in Genesis. Because Jesus wasn't the first son of God. Matter of fact, Paul calls him the last. And then in the same verse says he is the second man. So if he's the last Adam or the second Adam, then who was the first? Right. Yes, yes, yes. In the beginning, God said, let us make man. Come on, put your hand on yourself. Say, man, 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 mankind, mankind. In our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. And then God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and up came Adam, and then later came Eden, Eve. And God looked at them and said, these my kids. Amen. Which means all humans were born to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. We were created to be God's kids. And the thing that's got to hit you tonight, and the thing that's got to be imprinted, stamped in our consciousness, is the fact that we are God's children. Amen. What in the world would we be 
if we believed that in fullness. I tell you what we would be. We would be like Jesus and Peter. Because I know what some of you are saying, because you're like, you know, we, we, we preach Jesus to the point where we disconnected the reality of having any of the dimensional glory that he walked in. That's why the old, the, uh, when I say the older saints, I mean the generation before us, this is why they never touched anything like this. They regulated it all to heaven. That when I got saved, I was on my way to heaven. And that's good. Everybody say, thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. But we left it all up to heaven. All of our songs were, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoice. All our troubles will be over. All of those things were, and they, 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 they banished it off because they didn't understand. No, no, this is not about waiting till I get to heaven. This is about manifesting sonship in the earth. This is, this is about becoming something that Jesus paid for right now in the earth realm. What you need dominion when you get to heaven for? Ain't going to be nothing to dominate. We all going to be dominators. What you need authority and power? What, 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 what is this, these signs shall follow you? Ain't none in heaven. What, what about all of these things that will happen? And so they banished it off. And so we had a whole generation waiting to get to heaven. And we felt like when we got there, we'd get joy, we'd get peace, and all our tears be wiped away, and all our troubles would be over. And Jesus is saying, excuse me, I didn't die for you to wait for that. I died so you could have it right now. Amen. Amen. So now, the first thing you have to realize, it's in the doctrine of sonship, is that Jesus came to redeem us back to the Father. Amen. We didn't lose a religion. We didn't lose Bible study, Bible school, praise and worship in the garden. We lost a relationship with our daddy. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to drill it in. I'm going to drill it in. I'm going to drill it in. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, the Bible says God came in the garden in the cool of the evening. They just hung out. It was a relationship between the father and his offspring that they literally came out of his breath. He created them. He created them. They were so precious to God. My creation in the earth realm, my sons and daughters, I breathed my spirit into them and they came alive. And then I gave them dominion over the whole planet, which means the earth belongs to the children of God. That was the plan, that if you came out of the breath of God, the earth belongs to us. Amen. Gave it to us to steward, to dominate. It was never about having church, and I'm going to keep on saying it because i got to renew our minds because a lot of people think you have done your deed when you came to church. Yeah. You feel good about yourself. Because you see it as a religion, yes, right. as an exercise in keeping some type of laws and values. And even when we look in the word of God, we see it as a standpoint of things we must obey, things we must do. We got to do them. We got to do them. We got to do them. You can do all of that and still not operate in the relationship that you were destined to have. This is about a relationship with God. And Adam and Eve were born to be his children. And what God wanted was the whole earth flooded with these sons and daughters of the Most High God. That God could come in and dwell among us. 
and talk to us and treat us like kids. This was a relationship between a creator and his created. Yes, right. Oh my God. This was a relationship between omnipotence yeah. and omniscience and the authority of, of yeah. all creation and his kids. Yeah. Yeah. And your Bible declares he did that. Excuse me, paraphrasing just to mess with the devil. <laughs> yeah, the book of Ephesians says, God says, I'm going to show you something so majestic, so marvelous that in the ages to come, all principalities and powers are going to have to stand back and watch me be good to my kids. Instead, we have raised a group of church people who are wrestling and fighting and struggling with principalities and powers. Instead of understanding, oh, no, you don't understand. Jesus didn't struggle. Jesus didn't struggle. No, Jesus dealt with it. Why? Because he understood he was on the earth to demonstrate sonship. And he says, instead of y'all letting principalities and powers dominate you, yes. I'm supposed to be showing to principalities and powers just how dominant you are. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. But we have got to have a paradigm shift. Yes. Can we go further? Yes. Yes. So now Adam and Eve when they died spiritually, what did they lose? It's rhetorical, but I want you to think about it. If you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. They rebelled against their father. They rebelled against their creator, and they died. They died a spiritual death. They lost the privileges. They lost the nature. They lost the mind of being children of the Most High God. And it is for that purpose Jesus came down through 42 generations. And he's coming after something. He's coming after this connection. Somebody say connection. He's coming after this connection, which means God sent a son not to reap some church folk. If God is sending a son, what is he trying to reap? Come on, say it. Don't be afraid of it. Come on, say it. Say it. It ain't a trick question. If he's sending a son, what is he trying to reap? Sons. Sons. He's coming after the family. Creation was supposed to be God's family. God's children. And one man lost our whole connection, our whole inheritance. And Jesus is coming into the earth to get it back. And Jesus says, before I hand it back to you, I want to show you what sonship looks like. And what you are seeing in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is a child of God walking in all of the benefits of a son of God in the earth realm. So can we look at it? Let's look at it. Peter looks at him and says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Which means now that we have that revelation, that stone laid, that foundation laid, then now we understand John chapter number one. And I'm just going to quote it, a lot of it, for the sake of time. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him there was nothing made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Ooh, 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 uh oh. Uh-oh, in him was life, and the Zoe, the God kind of life, was the light of men. Jesus. And the light 
shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Y'all ain't ready for this. Come on, put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your head. Put your, put your hand on your head. In him was life, the Zoe, the God kind of life, the eternal life. And the life was the light of men. And that life shined in darkness and the darkness couldn't apprehend it, couldn't comprehend it. Which means Jesus came into the earth to show us something. Amen. To show us the God kind of life. But also this God kind of life that he came to show us was the original life that we should have had. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so what he was doing was reintroducing us to a level of life that we were supposed to have before Adam sent us all into spiritual death. He comes back on the scene and says, I'm about to show y'all something and I'm about to reveal it to you and I'm going to do it right in front of you so that you can realize what I'm carrying, what I came to redeem you back to. It's something that this earth realm can't put out. Can't handle it. You want to know why? Because everything in the earth knows the authority of sons of God, except sons of God. Everything knows who we are, except us. Everything responds to us. Everything knows it's subservient and underneath our authority, except us. And that's what Jesus came to show us. He says, I'm about to show you Three things. So write these three things down or, or just remember them and I'm going to have you to say it and we're going to try to get through number three by the end of tomorrow night. Number one, he came to show us the identity of a son. Everybody say identity. identity. Say it again, identity. identity. One more time, identity. identity. Number two, he came to show us the authority of a son. Authority. Yeah, say Authority. 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 One more time, authority. And then he came to show us the inheritance of a son. Say inheritance. inheritance. Say it again, inheritance. inheritance. One more time, inheritance. inheritance. Now, you can't go into this new season with your old clothes. Because in order to go where God is trying to take the church, we're going to have to shift into this new identity. We can't go like we are. I thought Jesus was coming back for a glorious church. I thought that's what Paul said. I thought, I thought the glorious church was coming, right? Hmm. Does it look glorious now? Huh? Let's be real. I mean, some things that happened in the last 18 months that have shown that the church a whole long way from glory. So that tells me something has got to happen. If the devil is turning the heat up, if all hell is breaking loose in the earth, there's also supposed to be some breaking loose on the other side. And we're going to have to change our identity. Tonight, when you leave here, you will no longer leave here in your identity. You're going to leave here in the identity of Christ. Because he is the identity of a son. So now let me ask you a question, and this is still foundation for real. Let me ask you a question. Jesus comes into the earth realm. Now it's revealed who he is. He is the offspring of God, born of God, but wrapped in flesh. And he walks around in the earth to show us our identity. Hmm. Back in John 1 now, 
It says the life was the light of men. That's what he came to show us, to reveal to us who we were. And then you drop down in John 1, 14, and it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And listen to the verse now. And we beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Mm. Which means what God did is he sent his son and then wrapped him in clothes so that we as humans could behold the glory of one begotten of the Father in the earth realm. That the whole thing Jesus wanted to show you was the glory of a child of God in the earth realm. A son of God. Say it after me. A son of God. Say it again. Say a son of God. Say it again. A son of God. He says, what I was trying to reveal to you was what level of glory, and I'll talk more about that tomorrow night, what level of glory those that are begotten of God function in in the earth realm. Now, at the time he was doing this, he was the only one walking in that level. Adam was the first one, but he messed it up. Now the last Adam comes, and he's revealing to us all of this new identity of a man, another kind of man, another level of man, what a son looks like. Mm -hmm. This is why, you know, in the midst of all of this racial stuff in the earth, I've been scratching my head, especially in the church. You know, the world going to be the world. They, they're going to do what they do. But I've been puzzled by the church. I've been puzzled. I really have. That all of this mess is what I call it, and that's the best I can come up with without sinning. <laughs> I'm shocked that it would get into the church. And then people got upset with me because I wouldn't jump in it. Because I can't tell you the last time I thought about being black. I'm so far past that. Because being black ain't never got me nothing from God. Oh, yeah, I came to work on you. I came to work. This is why we can't get there. We, we, we still dealing with this stuff. And how we are so committed to our natural DNA. That we're so committed to tracing our gene pools all the way back to Africa and all of these things in 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 white people chasing their 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 lineage back and and people because of the color of their skin thinking they're inferior or superior. It is just it's 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 mind boggling to me that in 2021 we still dealing with that kind of stuff in the church. Because I got to break the news to y'all. You ain't white. And you ain't black. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Or maybe you are. Maybe that's what you want to be. Maybe that's the extent of your identity. But your identity is not in the color of your skin. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Hallelujah. 
And it's because we do not see ourselves as sons and daughters of the living God. <laughs> that music team ready. <laughs> but I still got some work to do. And it dawned on me why we can't get beyond some of the stuff because we have never stepped into the real reality of being children of God. We, we, we way back in preschool. When Jesus came to show us our true identity. No, they're fine. Just, you, you're up there. Just take a seat. Just take a seat. Find a chair. Thank you. I thank y'all for being ready, though. Amen. I used to be a pastor, so I appreciate that kind of stuff. So now, we have to see ourselves. That our true identity is in Christ. That he shows me what I am. <laughs> so I'm not identifying with nothing according to the flesh. Amen. That dominates what I am in the spirit. That I have such a new identity that I do not see myself in color, I don't see myself in class. I don't see myself in gender. I understand, let me be very clear, that there's different genders. But none of that identifies who I am. Who do men say that Isaac is? Some says he's a black man. Some says that he's a little bright skin. And some says we don't know. i tell you what I am. I am the son of the living God. We're offspring from God. And Jesus says, I came to show you your identity. Everybody say a son of God. Son of God. Say it again, a son of God. This is why I call this the doctrine of sonship, because the thing we must get ingrained in the body of Christ is that once you became born again, you became a son of the living God. See, 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 that, that don't mean, that doesn't mean you get to walk around deep, you know, like I'm a son of God. That just simply means God is my daddy. See, this is why I know people don't get it because they still fighting about skin and race and governments and Democrats and Republicans and all that stuff. When God's your daddy, when God is your daddy, if my daddy be for me, who can be against me? If my daddy owns the cattle of a thousand hills, I ain't got to beg for nothing. Oh, come here, David. Yes, I was yes once young. Now I'm old, but I have to come to a conclusion. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. We're not beggars. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God, and I will never lack for nothing. Okay, okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. Put your hand on your head and say, God's my daddy. That's what Jesus came to show us. See, you'll miss it if you think in religion. You'll miss it if you're thinking that he just came to be a miracle worker and save us from our sins. And you'll miss it. What you are looking at in Jesus, oh, Tokosha, is the relationship between a father and a son in the earth realm. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Oh, my God. 
Everybody say sonship, sonship. That's what he wanted to show us. Sonship. Sonship. What a son is like in the earth. How a son relates to a father as a man. See, this is why Philippians 2 say he became a man. He, he came to show us this. He didn't have to do it. Jesus didn't come into the earth for himself. He didn't lose nothing. He didn't sin. He didn't, he didn't eat nothing of the tree. No, he came for us. He came for the disconnection to become the reconnection so that he could link man back with the father. And we say it all the time, you know, God's my father, our father, we sing it, you know, oh, but we don't believe it. Look at your name and say, yeah, you ain't got it yet. 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 You want to know why? Because in order to get it, you got to get it like Peter got it. It's got to come by revelation. It's got to hit you one day. Oh, my God. God's child. He's my father. Look at your neighbor and say, did you hear what he said? <laughs> that Jesus is showing me the identity of that which is born of God in the earth realm. He came to show us how God treats his children. <laughs> That's why Jesus went to sleep in the middle of the storm. He just, he just I'm going to bed. <laughs> why? Because he knew who he was and he knew who his father was. And he says, I came to show you a healthy relationship between God and man. See, God couldn't have a healthy relationship with man because we were fallen and we were sinful and we were wicked. Jesus comes to show us what this relationship looks like. Now, here's, here's my assignment for tonight and then I'm done because we're going to move further into this. Mm, mm, mm. When you leave here tomorrow night, you're going to walk in the house like fix me something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> then your wife going to look back at you and say, get it yourself. I'm a son too. <laughs> Come on, put your hand on your head for these next five minutes. Come on, Sam, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. So the revelation is thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the son of God as a man. And Jesus says upon this rock, everybody say this rock, which means this revelation is what I'm going to build my church on. Good God. Oh my God. It's this revelation that I'm going to build my church. And boy, when I release these sons of God in the earth, the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against them. But they're going to have to get this revelation. They're going to have to get this understanding. So now Jesus walks around modeling sonship. Number one, the identity. Now, we're probably going to shout a lot on authority and inheritance, but these next two minutes might be quiet. Because when you think about the identity of a son of God, that which is born of God, it speaks to the nature and character in which Jesus walked around in the earth realm with. To the degree that he gave us systems of behavior, for sons. Amen. Amen. This ain't religious. This is God saying, yeah. as my children, I don't want you doing that. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, this is about identity because sons don't like sin. Amen. 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 Come on. 
Mm -mm. I told you to be quiet. <laughs> so, 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 no, it's an identity thing. We fell into that in Adam. Yes. But now when we're restored to Christ, the thing that hits you when you get born again is that you have something in you that doesn't like dishonoring the Father. See, it ain't even about making sure that I keep the book right and I do that verse because he said do it. No, 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 no. No, this, this, this ain't a command like that. That, that was old covenant. This is, I want to honor my daddy. Right. Right. <laughs> because I'm a son of God and Jesus showed us how to walk in the earth realm in that identity to the point that he was in all points tempted, yet without sin. Without sin. Ain't that amazing? Sin. Which means you're most like a son when you're sinless. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, come on here. Come on here. This ain't about guilt. This ain't about condemnation. This ain't about shame. This is about sonship. This is about understanding. How many of you got kids? Uh, don't raise your hand on this one. H how many of you have had some that were some problems? <laughs> had some struggles with them? That's the relationship between God and hard-headed kids. It ain't about you losing your salvation. It's about the relationship. Because the first commandment with promise. Now, if honoring his natural father can get him healed of cancer, what would honoring your spiritual father? It's about sonship. We're children of God. And he's teaching us in the earth realm how to represent the Father. How to glorify him in the earth. How to walk amongst children of darkness and let them see the light. To let them see what the offspring of God do. How they handle themselves. How they conduct themselves. How they live on another level. See, that's the identity part. See, we want to walk on water, but you don't want to speak to people. See, we want the power, but we don't want the identity. And what it is, is this is about sonship. This is about honor to the Father that I have the identity. So now Christ then, and I'm done tonight, Christ then shows me because I've never been a son. Christ shows me how to model sonship. So now he is the perfect example of a son. So what I'm aiming after is his example. That's what Jesus is to you. He's your example of a son. So whatever he does in character and nature, I have to do. Mm -hmm. I learned this from Pastor Calvin. Y'all sit back down now. Don't get so excited. Everybody say, whatever Jesus does, that's what I'm going to do. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Because he says, whatever I see the Father do. Yes, sir. Come on now. He says, all I'm doing in the earth is just mimicking my daddy. However I see him act, that's how I act. Won't be just like my daddy. Come on here now, church. He say, whatever I hear him say, that's what I want to say. I want to be just like my daddy. Now we see the problem with the church. Because we want the glory, we want the inheritance, we want the power, the authority, but we don't want the image. We don't want the identity. Going back to all that racial stuff. See, see when, when you're born again, see, the love of God becomes your nature. So you, can, you can't even get into that kind of stuff. 
You have to come out of sonship to act like that. Because love becomes your nature. <laughs> uh, y'all don't want this. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Because if you're going to really walk like a son in the earth, you're going to have to bless those that curse you. You don't want the truth. You got to forgive people. You got to love those that hate you. That's what Jesus said. He, he's, he's, he's the picture of my sonship. So I got to do what he does because he's teaching me how to be a son. And so he said, you got to pray for them that despitefully misuse you. He says, you got to demonstrate my love, my character, my nature. He says, you got to demonstrate joy to people. You got to show them what joy looks like in human flesh. You got to show them what peace looks like. You're here to represent the Father. And I need you to look at somebody with a prophetic look on your face. That means you got to get ugly. And you got to tell them, quit misrepresenting my daddy. Come on, tell them, tell them. Quit, quit misrepresenting my daddy. Come on now, if we can get over this, we can get into some glory. I said, come on, church, and when we get into this. And so now, I know what you're asking, so let me just jump through it and we'll pick up here tomorrow night. If this is true, that Jesus is the picture of a son, and that our whole doctrine must shift to sonship because that's what we were created to be, God's my daddy. Then why can't we see this walked out like the early church? It is because of this phrase called sin consciousness. Everybody say it after me, sin consciousness. The reason Jesus was able to perfectly walk out the manifestation of a son in the earth in all of its glory was because he never knew sin. He came born of God. We come from what I call the sin side. Tell somebody, say, I ain't from the south side. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from the sin side. Come on. Come on, you might well tell them, yes, you are. That's where you're from. You're from the sin side. If you're born into this earth realm, you come from the sin side. Amen. You were raised on the sin side. And now we've come into sonship with God. But sin consciousness of the way we used to be and the way we used to think and the way we used to do things and all the connections to that side of us won't let us experience full sonship. And so sin consciousness is what we've got to defeat. So let me tell you what that is. Sin consciousness is any thought, any behavior, any emotion, any feeling, any action that we had when we were shaped and molded in sin Anything that now tries to come into our character, <coughs> conduct, emotions, feelings, thinking is coming from that sin side. In other words, sin consciousness is the only thing that can rob you of sonship. Because you can take the children of Israel out of Egypt. But if you don't get Egypt out of them, they still won't go into the promised land. And I need you to stand up on your feet and declare this loud and bold. Say, I am no longer a sinner. I was a sinner. Now I'm a son of God. And I will think like it. I will speak like it. I will act like it and I will live like it in Jesus' name. That's who we are.
Now, now I want to pray over you, and then we're going to give and we're going to go because tomorrow night we're going to be able to move into some things now. Because if you don't get this in your identity, you won't go. You won't, you won't be able to step into your inheritance. You got to know who you are. You got to believe it. You got to pray until it hits you like revelation. Man, I'm a child of God. Father, tonight, I try to obey you the best I can, could. You told me to walk it through line upon line that Jesus died to bring us back to a level of sonship with the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody just say that? Thank you for coming after us. Thank you for bringing us back into such a relationship with the Father. Now, Jesus... We owe you to walk in this, this, this newness of life. Father, you sent us the spirit to teach us how to live in this dimension in the earth realm. And we want to glorify you. Tonight, I declare and decree that the people of God watching me and in this room will not walk out of here like you are some God up in the sky somewhere. We will walk out of here like you are our Father. And we've been born again, which makes us your children. Now let that sink into us. you, Jesus. And let this prophetic word that was spoken tonight, that for where we're going, Father, we're going to have to change some clothes. We're coming out of all religion. We're coming out, we're coming out of organized church and we're going to step into sonship so we can demonstrate in this earth realm the goodness of our Father. Lift your hands and say, My Father, which art in heaven, I am your child. Now just lift your hands and just just worship in the Spirit just for just one minute. Just let that permeate. Just let it permeate. The doctrine of sonship. This is where we got to get to. We got to act like we're children. That's where our faith will come alive. When faith won't work, love won't work, joy won't work, peace. All those things won't work if you, if you mess up the identity. When you understand I'm born again, I'm his child, and there is no good thing my father is going to withhold from me. Jesus was my example. Hallelujah. So your last confession for this night, say this, say, I no longer look at myself as a true example as a son of God. I look at Jesus who was a true example of a son of God. And the more I look at him, the more I will look like him. And I will be changed into the same image from glory to glory to glory by the Spirit of God. All children of the Most High God, thank God. Now are we the sons of God. When when Bill began to prophesy, I was stirred in my spirit. And of course, I'm not here to preach tonight. But I believe that I have something to say. If you could, Pastor, I want you to stay up here. And Gil and Debbie, if you would come, and if you would come. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. When he was talking about change of clothes, I see that there is a change of clothes and your clothes are coming on you in a greater measure. It's come already, but it's increasing. And the anointing that is on your father is being transmitted to you. And the anointing on your mother is coming upon you. It's coming. Because there's a change of clothes in you. And there's a greater rest for you. And the things that used to weigh on you will not weigh on you any longer. Because the clothes have been transmitted and it'll be easier for you to flow and what I've gifted you and you know and the word of the Lord will be clearer and the word of the Lord will be stronger and the gift of God in you will be so free so free to flow the word of the Lord in your mouth and you've learned to shift back and forth back and forth from the natural to the spiritual from the natural to the spiritual from the natural to the spiritual but it'll be more on the spiritual side because the natural has been taken care of and you found rest in my best and so a fresh anointing <laughs> Some things that were old and some things that were new will be strong upon you. The gifts and the anointing. Ah, shivet of Hoshepo, what he? Ah, so healing will flow from your hands. Omaska desa, so broche. Healing, anointing will flow. The gift and the anointing upon your hands and upon your life will be demonstrated in a great measure and the power of the Holy Spirit will be seen and people will be healed and delivered and set free. But it will be with such ease where it used to take so much more energy it'll be a strength and an ease and the anointing will flow like a warm breeze. Oh. Oh, and you'll preach. And you'll teach. And you'll speak with the unction of the Holy Spirit. And the gifts of leadership that are on the inside of you will be so free with less thought with greater ease and the Spirit of God will rest on you for this season so it's now it's time and the shift and the change of clothes it is divine. It is a Shemekele. It's not by man. It's not by effort. 
It is by the Spirit of God that I have ordained it even tonight. It grows in your sight and you see it, you know it. You've seen glimpses, but you'll see it more clear and you'll be able to hear. And it'll be like you are wearing your daddy's clothes. And you speak with his voice. And the choices that you make, the decisions that you make, and the steps that you take will be just like your daddy was making those choices, making those decisions, taking those steps. So rest in the power of the anointing. It's the gifts and the callings. It wasn't you then. It isn't you now. It's me and my grace and my gifts and my callings and my anointing that enables you, that causes you to fulfill my destiny and my purpose that I chose you for and I designed you for and I've anointed you for. So it's now and it's time. So just rest and fall in line with the purpose of God. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Right here, right now. It's a new day, a change of clothes to take your place. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Come on, somebody ought to stand up on your feet. I said, Hallelujah. It'll be so. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody ought to shout in the room right now. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's. <laughs> It's a refreshing day. It's a glorious day. Hallelujah. I said it's a refreshing day. It is a glorious day. Because it's a glory way. It's a glorious day. Because it's a glory, a glory way. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. You're just, you're just experiencing what the Holy Spirit is speaking. What you believe to receive is what you're going to see and what you experience. The old, the things that God wanted to let you, have you let go of, you must let go of. But the things that he wants you to take hold of, you must take hold of. You can't reach forth under those things that are before, holding on to those things that are behind. Amen. If God has destined for you to let go and take hold, you've got to forget those things that are behind and reach forth under those things that are before. 
So it's a new season and it's a new time when changes of clothes and changes of purpose and destiny happen from the top. It goes down to every person that's connected to those who are in leadership and are anointed to stand in that place, in that position. So there's a grace that flows down. And it comes into your house, into your home, into your life. And so changes will happen, receive them, and the anointing will flow to you too. Because God's purpose is not just for those in leadership to change and change their clothes. But God's purpose is for everyone to take their place. And it takes a change of clothes in your life for you to be able to take your place and fulfill your destiny. And we're all fulfilling it together. Oh, Shahaha. Glory. Glory. Have you received the offering yet? Do we need to receive another one? <laughs> Go. My, my, my. What a coming. What a coming. Tomorrow morning, you will be ministering at 10 o'clock. Isaac P. 11. And God's going to start at 9. Amen. <laughs> He's going to get it started before we get here. So when we get here, we'll be ready in Him. Amen. Whew. Any happy people? Any, is there any happy people? Perfetto, <laughs> Lisa, we love you guys. We love you guys. Come up here. Come up here. God's been good to you. But you haven't really seen the fullness of God's goodness yet. Because God says, get ready. Because I'm about to pour out my goodness, my blessing on you. That you can't even, uh, can't even remember. <laughs> last time I see. Ha, 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 ha. And you'll be so blessed. Because of your dedication. And your faithfulness. And standing with me, said the Lord. And didn't quit. Didn't give up. There were times. There were hard times. But you stayed the course. And because you stayed the course, you are will and will be re rewarded abundantly, said the Lord of glory. And you walk in my best, and you have no less, because I am your best, said the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Well, the anointing that you have on you is increasing. I've seen it this week. I've known you for a long time. But I saw something on you this week I've never seen before. A level of anointing. And God, the old Shikahaha, is not done by no ways. No means. And the devil has tried to discourage you. Tried to discourage you. You have not said anything to anybody except y'all discuss it between you two. The devil brought sickness and disease and tried to take you out. But he can't take out what God's anointed to do this time. You are anointed to do is a minister to what God's called you and that you're doing now. But the blessing will increase. The anointing will increase. And you rely completely on him. And you are truly his son and daughter. And he said this. He told me to tell you this. He loves you. He loves you. You know that, but he told me to tell you he really, really loves you. So go from this place this week with a new vision, a fresh vision, a revelation of who you are in Christ. Nothing shall move you. Nothing will shake you. And you'll stand strong and stronger than ever before. You have been so faithful to the men and women of God over the years. 
And because of your faithfulness, I too will reward you, saith the Lord of glory. Well, this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Just the beginning. Glory to God. The Lord told me to tell you the money will come. The money will come. It just rose up in me so strong. The money will come. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but they feed. He cooks in his house pots of food. I mean like these great big commercial restaurants full of food. And he and this he don't now we're talking good food. We're not talking like soup and potatoes. We're talking like big big meals. Feeding the homeless. He takes the food to them. He goes into homeless shelters and they feed people. And they do that on their whatever the money comes in. But God said to tell you there's going to be more money coming. Hallelujah. Every need is going to be met. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Praise God. So if you feel led to sow into them tonight, there they are. Bless them. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the mic. Hallelujah. Don't be concerned of what God's doing. He's doing things you haven't even thought about doing. Because he's got you in his heart. Got you on his mind. Got you in his plan. And his plan is that you're going to be so successful and so blessed. And doors will open. And you'll be able to minister. See people come more so than ever before to the kingdom of God. Because your heart has been towards him, you've been faithful towards him all these years. God says, I'm turning some things on. And you will get some new clothes. <laughs> this is a change of clothes tonight for you two. Change of clothes. The battles, the battles you fought with your body, the devil tried to also take you out. But he's a liar. He's defeated. And you're more than conquerors. And you wake up tomorrow morning and say, God, I feel so different. I feel like I got some new clothes on. I feel important. And you are important. And God recognizes and knows exactly what you've done for him. He hasn't forgot you. He hasn't left you. And he never will leave you. And he's always there for you. So trust him. Lean not to your own understanding. For greater things are getting ready to happen in your life. Praise God. Come on, raise your hands and praise Him tonight. God's good. God's good. <laughs> Glory. Glory. You know, don't be so surprised, and I know you won't, because you stepped into some great things recently. There's greater things getting ready to happen. And God's already showed you some things, both of you. And you're moving into the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and miracles and signs and wonders in a greater measure because you two are changing clothes again. You already changed clothes before. But now you're going to really change some clothes into a place, into an area that God has prepared for you. You have been chosen for this time and for this hour to do what you call to do. Satan tries to come and bring discouragement, even in the midst of your blessing. But he's still a liar. He's still defeated. He's under your feet. And doors, even greater doors. You've had a lot of small doors and some big ones but there are going to be even bigger doors. And every need will be multiplied and blessed in your life. Things that you've been praying about. Finances have been coming in, but it's going to start doing this. It's been doing, it's been doing this, but it's going to start doing this. 
Yeah, it's going to start doing this. Lower, lower. Ah, 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 ah. Go away. Give Isaac and the Holy Ghost a big hand tonight. Powerful word. Hallelujah. We love you. I'm not going to submit, dismiss you. I'm going to say so long until the morning. God bless.